Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. Today we're checking out You'll Never Guess the Most Popular Internet Country Code. It's Mapmen. Love Mapmen. But this video just came out a couple days ago, so I would encourage you, if you've not seen this one yet, or go to the Jay Foreman page and watch it there first. And then if you feel like watching it again, come back over here and to my channel and watch me react to it and lay my own turd on their beautiful creation. So, Let's get started. www.welcome to mapmen. www.welcome to mapmen.com. We're the men.org. And here's the dot map forward slash titles. Map men, map men, map, map, map men, men. Today's program is about a map of the internet. Hang on, we did that last time. Yes, but that was a different map of the internet. Is it different enough that we won't repeat ourselves and the story will still feel completely unique and compelling? Absolutely. Oh, go on then. <laughs> this map shows all the registered CCTLDs on the DNS system. CC what? Uh -huh. Ah, yes. Before we get to the juicy map bit, we need a crash course in the internet. Strap in. Oops. Back in the early days of the internet, when computers looked like this, people surfed the internet Hang on. painstaking. Back in what? the what, we need what, a what, what am I looking at here? System. The online world. Dot US. Dot UK. Dot CO. We need a crash course in the internet. Strap yes, in. Please. Oops. Back in the early days of the internet, when computers <laughs> looked like this, people surfed the internet by painstakingly typing entire website addresses into the URL bar of a browser. The okay. Words in the they always ram in the joke, so let's just see. Megatronics DCX 450 Mark II, personal computer. <laughs> personal computer. Only. 14,999 pounds, more than four kilobytes of memory. <laughs> That's barely any. 15 plus colors, <laughs> lovely chunky buttons. Painstakingly typing entire website addresses into the URL bar of a browser. The words in this web address are known as a domain name, and every single one is Space stored camp. on something called the domain name system, <laughs> or DNS. Sorry to stop it, but it says uh, www.spacejam.com. Please, exclamation mark. The DNS does one very important job. It translates memorable website addresses into the horribly unmemorable IP addresses made up of numbers and dots that computers use to communicate and access websites. <laughs> this worked fine for the first few years, <laughs> but as the early... What does that say? It says funnycats.com. Okay, got it. Well, ...website addresses into the horribly unmemorable IP addresses made up of numbers and dots that computers use to communicate and access websites. <laughs> <laughs> this worked fine for the first few years, but as the early internet grew, it became clear that this system wouldn't be able to cope with demand. Okay, well, we got to read all those. What do we have here? ScreamingGoats.com, HalfAdozenEggs.com, CheekyMonkeys.com, MapMenMerch.com, ExploreRutland.com, BlindMice.com, EdibleSwans.com, SillyGeese.com, CowardlyLions.com, CuteDogs.com, PoisonousSnakes.com, DancingHamsters.com In the 1980s, a California-based <laughs> super geek called John Postel figured out a way of streamlining this, this clunky guy. system. And what he did was so important, it would eventually earn him the nickname God of the Internet. What does it say up here? Ready, 10 print, I am a word, I am a nerd. 20, go to 10, run. <laughs> so John Postel is printing out, I am a nerd. John broke down the DNS into a hierarchical system that commands could flow through without getting all clogged up. And to make it work, every website now included something called a TLD, or Top Level Domain. The TLD is the flourish after the dot that describes the type of website you're looking at. Okay. The first six to be included were .gov, governmenty, .edu, educationy, .net, internetty, .mil, military -y, .org, relating to non-profit organs, and by far most famously, .com. Commercially slash absolutely anything. -ish. Yes. Most computer scientists at the time felt that these six top-level domains was plenty to be getting on with. But John Postel was no most computer scientist. He cleverly envisaged the future and predicted that the internet would spread around the world, one day being used by as many as 4,000 people. Brilliant. So just I just want to stop and see if I can find a picture of John Postel because I wonder if he was wearing the wig and the beard to look like God, or if, oh, it does kind of look like him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good job, Matt, man. 
He cleverly envisaged the future and predicted that the internet would spread around the world, one day being used by as many as 4,000 people. So, to stop the six TLDs getting overcrowded with websites, in 1985 he invented a new subcategory, the Country Code Top Level Domain, or CCTLD. CCTLDs worked like the plus 44 dialing code you have to put on a phone number when calling the UK from abroad. Like this. The country code <laughs> TLD is this bit, which comes before the slash, after the dot, and sometimes, depending on the country, after another TLD, such as the co in .co.uk or the com in .com.au. The important thing is, the country code always has two letters. Most okay. people don't give a second, let alone a third thought to these codes, but the because top. we love countries, and because we have a vested interest in the internet, <laughs> we've gone and given at least four thoughts to them. And it turns out, country code top-level domains are a fascinating mess. There are 195 UN recognised countries, so there should be 195 country code TLDs. But there are 308! Why so many? Wow. Who was responsible for giving out all these codes? Helpfully for our costume budget, it was John Postel again. <laughs> Rather than come up with a two-letter code for every country himself, which would have taken at least half an hour, John took the easy route and found a pre-existing list, the catchily titled ISO 3166-1, which had been invented in the 70s for the purposes of post. And because it was for post, it also included a lot oh. of islands that weren't, strictly speaking, countries. Some of the extra non-country country codes included Antarctica, Ack, United States Minor Outlying Islands, Um, and St Helena. <laughs> Shh, sorry, St Helena. <laughs> so the internet, just like the real world, was now divided into countries, and that didn't cause any problems at all. Or did it? John Postel had just split the planet up into codes and immediately ran into a problem. This country. Okay, so they got a red phone booth. They got Mr. Bean looking like Mr. Bean. They got a cup of tea. The Union Jack in the shape of the country. What's this kid with the bird? Is that a falconer? Who is that? I'm sure there's a joke there somewhere. The existing code from the ISO list was GB, but Britain already had its own academic network called Janet, which used .uk. So, to oh. save faff, he let Britain keep its non-ISO code .uk, which was very sensible because GB stands for Great Britain and excludes Northern Ireland, and UK doesn't. Et's us nay? Et's us nigh? Et's us nigh? Is that... that's us now? I think that's what that is. That's us now. Et's us nigh? Right? I can't do it, really do it, Irish accent. Incidentally, it took oh, the driving right. in another country yep. stickers people several decades to catch up. Even more sensibly, Postel also predicted that in the future there'd be plenty more potential problems where this one came from. So he set up the International Corp. There's a bumper sticker that says, What would Mr. Spoon do? Who is Mr. Spoon? Huh. Even more sensibly, Postel also predicted that in the future there'd be plenty more potential problems where this one came from. So he set up the International Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, ICANN, in case he I can't do the job anymore. <laughs> and it's a good thing he did, because after his ungodly death in 1998, his prediction of future disagreements came predictably true. <laughs> this is great, don't say. John Postel, HTTPS, colon for www. He relies... Oh, here lies John Postel, such a lovely and clever man, missed by many. 1943-1998.com slash rest slash in slash peace. Hmm. Some places oh. that had no business being included on a list of country codes demanded to be added, such as the EU, which is in fact several countries. Another headache hmm. for ICANN was the world map kept changing. They had to add new country codes for new countries. And they had to remove country codes for now defunct countries. Defunct trees. Hmm. But one code they curiously didn't retire was .su, the Soviet Union. Even though the Soviet Union stopped being a thing in 1991, right. and the 15 countries it broke up into all got their own lovely codes in 1994, pressure from lobbyists who always quite liked the Soviet Union persuaded ICANN to keep the old Soviet domain, just in case. Most are now nasty <laughs> scanning sites. What does Putin's sign say? What do we want? Dot SU. Where do we want it? The internet. What do we say? Please. <laughs> <laughs> Most are now nasty scanning sites, so if you're thinking about surfing oh. the .su web, make sure your antivirus is good and up to date. Uh, please insert .su vaccine now. Antivirus is good and up to date. <laughs> oh, when can we look at that really interesting looking map? Right away. <laughs> this world map shows the size of each country adjusted to reflect the number of country code domain websites that are registered there. 
The first thing you notice is that some countries are alarmingly massively bigger than they are in real life. Yeah. The UK, Netherlands and Germany, for example. This shouldn't come as a surprise. After all, these countries are densely populated with big economies and lots of computers. Broadly, these three factors explain most <laughs> of the weirdness, including the alarmingly asymmetrical North and South Koreas, or the relative smallness of Africa, which has fewer registrations oh, than all of Germany so put together. But what makes this map truly fascinating is the anomalies that don't make obvious sense. Such as the USA. Why is the world's largest economy so shrivelly small? We don't US use that US. Is, surprisingly, one of the developed world's least used CCTLDs. We don't, the USA, never which it. often considers itself the world's default country, has selfishly adopted the supposedly international TLD.com as their yes. own. As the inventors right. of the country code themselves, the way they see it, country codes are only required for websites that fall into the niche category of foreign. Right. Perhaps the biggest mystery is what on this map Wait a minute. Earth is this map? There's something on that map. Code. State of Canada. <laughs> what does that say? What does that say up there? France, Europe, Perhaps. <laughs> don't know, Asia. Perhaps the biggest mystery is, what on this map of Earth is this massive island country with nearly 25 million domains, TK. the highest of all, with the country code .tk? Turkey? Turkey's not an island. Turkey? Turkey doesn't have a K. So where is it? Tokelau. Never heard of it. Neither have I. Tokelau. Neither have you. Tokelau no? is a minuscule island chain in the Pacific with a total area of four square miles, a fifth the size of Torquay. I want to see photos. That looks like an ideal place for a resort because you have all this water in the middle that's not... You, it's like a gigantic tidal pool. Wow, beautiful water. Beautiful. It's not even a country, but a territory of New Zealand. And the CIA says it has the smallest economy in the world. It has the smallest economy in the world. It's so remote that it was the last place on Earth to be connected to the telephone in 1997. <laughs> There's a so why does this place have more domains under management than anywhere else? To understand that, you need to understand the most important rule when it comes to country codes. Which is? That there are no rules! It's up to each individual <laughs> country to come up with its own policy for how its CCTLD is used. Some countries are strict, only letting their own residents register, but others allow their CCTLDs to be used by anyone who wants them from anywhere on the planet. So why mm. do so many people want to use Tokelau's letters, and why does Tokelau want to let them? Because money, and because money. In 2001, mm. a Dutch tech entrepreneur called Joost Zuerbeer offered to pay the Tokelauan government to let him give away .tk domains for free in exchange for hosting ads. Win, win, win. Unfortunately, this resulted in .tk being used for millions of temporary domains by spammers, fishers, and cyber criminals. They have a uh, Facebook written with two zeros. That is what they do. And then it says, this is the real face Bach, and you have win a prize. <laughs> Please be in better your credit card details. Face Bach, 2009. That's very accurate. That's what they're like. They're full of typos. Which is why, <sighs> rounded up to the nearest 1%, 100% of all .tk websites are registered to people who are not really in Tokelau and have never actually been there. Hmm. As recently as November 2023, <laughs> .tk's free domains were discontinued, meaning this map Batman is already out of date, and Tokelau will have to find another way to literally put themselves on the map. But other countries mm. didn't have to work so hard to get a similar slice of the action, because the two letter codes they got given were like a winning lottery ticket. Just up the road from Tokelau, the tiny island nation of Tuvalu noticed that their two letters, .tv, might be very desirable to television and gaming yeah. websites. So in 1995, they started selling their domain to sites like Twitch.tv, earning them yes. a handsome $10 million a year, even though less than half the country has access to the internet. Wow. Meanwhile, in North Africa, the nation of Libya noticed that their letters, .ly, sounded like an adverb. So they sold their catchy sounding domain to sites like Bitly, the Federated Brilliant. States of Micronesia sold theirs to radio stations, Djibouti to their disc jockeys, and a whole host of <laughs> other countries that sound like things have been playing I didn't the same know that. Domain name fame game. Wait a minute, well, there's all kinds of jokes in there, y'all. Sounds like FM as in radio stations, so it's used by radio stations as well as other music or audio related websites such as last.fm. That's not a joke, but good to know. Stations, Djibouti to their disc jockeys. As well as being the first two letters of Djibouti, it's in Africa, look it up. DJ also stands for disc jockey, so it's used by websites that sell DJ-related stuff like turntables, massive headphones, <laughs> and big heavy boxes to store turntables and massive headphones. Sounds like it, as in fix.it or bodge.it or bop.it. Catchy, isn't it? Brits aren't allowed to use it anymore because of Brexit. <laughs> Used by YouTube when they shorten their URLs. You can't spell YouTube without B. Otherwise, it'd be YouTube. 
It sure is. Oh my gosh. Wow. Belgium must be making bank. Used by gaming websites. GG is a thing people say in the chat when they play games on the internet, and they don't have the time or inclination to type all the letters in good game. I don't know. Tech companies love this one. They're, ref <laughs> they're either referring to the 2001 film or the, as we write this in 2023, terrifying technology that gets exponentially better at your job every five minutes. <laughs> Y'all, I'm just waiting to see an AI JJLA reacts because there's so much footage of me just reacting to stuff and my voice and the way I look that you could easily make AI out of it. But then... Hmm. Dot LA, used by companies based in Los Angeles, almost definitely supposed to be pronounced dot LA, even though dot la sounds better. Dot la does sound better. Not to be outdone by LA, this one is unofficially used by companies on Long Island, New York. Long Island iced tea right there. Sounds like the first person singular pronoun me, as in meet me, love me, help me, etc. <laughs> NB, this image is only appropriate if you are Mick Hucknall. <laughs> I guess that's a photo of Mick Hucknall. I don't know who that is. Who is Mick Hucknall? Is he the Simple Minds uh, guy? Or Simply Simple simple Red? Simply Red? Simply Red, yeah. Some good songs, that guy. Dot MS. Microsoft likes to use this now and again. Remember when you used to say MS at the beginning of products they own, like MS-DOS or MS-Paint? Kind of like that, but backwards. Used a lot by sites in Denmark, the Netherlands, and Sweden in their respective languages. NU means now. Oh, private equity. Nobody knows what this means. Let's, <laughs> it's something to do with money. Non-Brits might not be familiar with this term. A CV is what we call what Americans call their resume. Oh, so it's become popular with Brits hosting their CVs. Oh, this is, this is a resume on the right. Phone lost. Please write to number six, Spool West Southwest, and I will get back to you within a month. A person with many of the attributes you'd expect to find in someone applying for this job, and some you wouldn't. Skills, 24, including <laughs> picturing Devin, using two verbs in sentences, run, record-breaking sideburn length, V loud burps, singing a very happy unbirthday whenever appropriate, striving, <laughs> Education, attended eight schools, 2005 to 2006. Experience, kept a diary for 11 weeks, in a bag, still unused but now lost. Made and eaten over 4,000 cod sandwiches to date. Almost climbed Roseberry Tapping, Topping, with mom. Twisted ankle in car park, sat in cars. <laughs> sat in car. Go mom. Well, they took so much time to write all this. What this map shows best is that the success of a CCTLD is a reflection of that country's power, history, governance, and good luck, and name. Mm. But what staring at this map makes us wonder is, why should the internet even need country codes? Isn't the idea of dividing the planet by nation states so 20th century, and the opposite of what the internet is supposed to be about? The Great answer point. is, who cares? These <laughs> days, it's perishingly rare that you ever find a website by typing in the URL yourself. With such right. little attention paid to the URL, it might as well be random letters and numbers that only computers understand, just like it used to be. And this may well be why mm. nonsensical TLDs have been allowed to flourish, and not just the country codes. The six TLDs we started with have now expanded to 1500, and they're no longer limited to three letters, allowing such terrific specifics as dot .cat, dot .ninja, dot .pizza, and dot .unicorn. Wow. Business Wedding Fish Garden Inc. Guru Rocks. Surf, buzz, cat, luxury, plumbing, horse, cool, mango, yoga, sexy, ninja, diamonds, guitars, taxi, coffee, tattoo, money, gripe, splunge, gives, Miami, pizza, got, Paris, Tokyo, Istanbul, cologne, kiwi, vodka, dad, mom, unicorn, sucks, lol, beer, space, meme, rocks, vote, soy, blue, pink, black, red, green, fishing, kim, funeral, ooh, ee, ooh, ah, ah, ting, tang, walla, walla, bing, bang. <laughs> I knew there was something in there. I knew they would put something in there. Stuff, nonsense, eggnog, bok, 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 bok. <laughs> what was the last bit? Bok, 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 bogark, then bunghole, etc. 
So who knows what TLDs and CCTLDs will look like in the internet of a billion years in the future. Well, if it carries on like this, there probably won't be any typing at all and the internet will just come at you like wasps. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh, well, we gotta watch all those. Hang on. What if Invest in real estate with 24% fixed returns. How to make homemade beer instructions. Scam or legit financial brokers reviewed and rated since 2005. Or X Peace Army. Money back as bonus up to 40 pounds. Anna sent you seven photos. <laughs> Click to view her profile. <laughs> Best brokers for investing rated by Forex Peace Army since 2005. Oh, beef butter. Erg. Ugh. Another great Map Men video. They're always so good. So many jokes in such a short amount of time. Go over to their channel and subscribe to them because they're really good. And watch all their videos. And maybe give me a recommendation of which one I should react to next. Anyway, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Later.